So this, this, well this, this uses a very high precision thermal compression bonder. So it has, an, it has a bonding accuracy of like a few microns. So you're, but the throughput is, is not very good. It, it maximum you're probably getting 400 or 500, you know, as opposed to like 1,200. I mean, that's the kind of difference we're talking about. This is very slow. Because you're, you've got to, you know, typically the way that a lot of those substrates I showed you where the bump, the flip chip bump was put on a substrate, those were basically there was a pick and place operation and then that went through a reflow oven. And it just mass reflowed all the bumps at one time. What they're doing here is they're doing this, this thermocompression step where they're having to like put heat and pressure to bond that thing together because it's, it needs a very precise control because it's a lot how to pitch. So 50, 40, 50 microns versus say 150 microns. No, this would not be in the smartphone because remember I told you that they're selling these for like 15 to $20,000 a piece. <laughs> so these are going into very special programs with the government or some kind of very high powered application that's going to use this, maybe some design, design tool soft, you know, that, that is going to be used for software design or something like that. So these are very expensive. So, so you know, so when you get it in your phone, this thing, this whole thing, whatever it is, better cost about a buck or two because your whole phone doesn't sell for more than three hundred, four hundred dollars. So, so this is, you know, this is why you got to understand all this, you know, the cost equation of this as well. Now, the other part of this problem is. Look how much area that takes up. What you really, if it's in a phone, I showed you a phone board, you don't have a lot of uh, space in there to be spreading this stuff out. You need the Z height in the phone. So that's why all the phone people want to go to the stacking of memory and logic. But you just got to figure out how to thin that down. So that's, and, and without breaking everything. Because, you know, it's, it, this is, there's some really interesting problems here that people are dealing with right now in the industry. Um, there's all kinds of startups here in the Bay Area where people are tackling these problems. And, and they're, they're, they're fascinating problems because there's a lot of people that, that really want to go in, in the direction of a full 3D IC stack. Are you, are you, uh, well, the funny thing is, I, from what I've been told, and we're not, you know, we haven't looked at a lot in this, that sometimes when you thin those down and you put them in the flex circuit and they bend, they're actually they're actually, it doesn't break them. It doesn't. It could, it could. So you got to get around that problem. But there, there's, a, there's a lot of research projects on people like, and, and then you probably have some kind of like coating over it, some kind of conformal coating over it to help protect it. So, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, lot of work going on in these areas that a lot of people, they're, they're these things called, I just came from Altera this morning and they were talking about um, embedding technology, embedding dyes and things. So, so there, there are, you know, making silicon is, is the easy part of the day. Putting it in a package, that's the hard part of the day. So, at least in my opinion. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of people have talked about doing a single chip integration to get to a phone, but I don't, I don't see that happening as much because there are too many things that people want the phone to do. You know, the phone's got to, I mean, if you look at all the things you can do with a phone, I don't think people want to just have, yeah, lost a lot of money on doing that. I mean, you know, it's, it's yeah, it'd be great. I mean, silicon integration trumps everything. But that's not, you know, but, but, but it costs an awful lot to integrate all that stuff into a single chip. Yeah, and I just don't see it happening. I think there's, it's, it's, too much better to put it in some kind of a module type thing. If you if you take if you take one of these phones, you can Google these things too. Google some of these teardown things and look at all the different packages and all the different functions that are in those phones today. 